Hi everyone, welcome to Your Choice, Your Voice. I'm your host, Aisha Nassim. Welcome to my first episode. So this is a very exciting time for me because ever since I was little, and I'm not exaggerating, I think I was around 10 years old, I would have these imaginary talk show host, like I would pretend to be a talk show host and I would name my show Your Choice and Your Voice. And you can ask my cousins or my friends, I would actually pretend I was Oprah and interview people. So this is something that I've always wanted to do and I thought, why not just start now and maybe in the future I can invite guests over. But this is kind of like a casual podcast so there's no structure but I will talk about whatever I'm going through and whatever my reflections are and yeah so I just want you to go grab your drink of choice whether that is coffee chai a cold drink I am impartial and I just love coffee more than tea tea is a bit weak for me it it doesn't give me that strength that coffee gives me So I was just thinking and I I thought, wow, I graduated university undergrad around two years ago and it honestly does not feel like it's been two years. And graduating right in the middle of the pandemic was not helpful. I feel like from 2021 and 2020, it really feels like they didn't happen. Maybe near the end of 2021, I had certain events happening to me where it felt like, okay, something's going on and the days did seem distinct. But 2020, it really felt like a flash. I don't remember anything from that year. And so I was just reflecting on how far I've come. So I'm working nowadays and graduating just made me reflect on a lot of things. So one thing I was thinking about is... You know, when you're in school and let's say, you know, I was a type of person that loved school and some of you might not relate to that, but school had structure. Okay. You knew what classes to go to. You knew who to meet for your friends, when to eat lunch, and you had a constant source of validation in the form of grades, in the form of feedback from your professors and teachers. And in a way, you had a sense of direction because when the semester started, you know when the midterms are, you know when the exam is, and you know when your breaks are. But when you graduate and you're working, and I'm not talking about people in grad school because that's a bit different, but when you basically come into the real world and you're maybe working in the corporate world, you kind of lose that sense of direction because you're like, now what? I don't have grades. I don't have someone telling me what to do. What should I do now? And I really did experience that myself because I was that type of person that really relied on academic validation as in doing well at school and just immersing myself in academics and professional success and there came a point in my life and where I thought okay now what because if you or if I if anyone constantly relies on external sources of validation there will come a point where that source ceases to exist or it might not be consistent or reliable. And then your whole sense of identity is shaken to the core. And I know that sounds a bit extreme and dramatic, but maybe you haven't gone through it yet. But um, I was w- listening to this or watching this YouTube video. Um, I don't know if you know, but there's this, I think her name is Toraya, and she interviews strangers, basically. And she asks a lot of like thought-provoking questions. And... She asked this one nurse, um, She's she asked this lady, she was like around 70 years old, and she was a retired nurse. And she said, all this time, I was putting all of me into work. I was a workaholic. I loved what I did. She was a nurse practitioner. And when she retired from her job, she lost that sense of compass or that sense of direction. And that spiraled her into depression because she now she didn't know what to do what was her purpose 
why was she even on this earth? And again, that's an extreme example, but there are times when we are left to kind of think about what our purpose is, why we're here, and especially when the sources of validations that you had in the past are taken away from you. And that's what I was experiencing or what I'm experiencing right now, in all honesty. So that kind of made me think about, okay, what does it mean to be externally validated and what does it mean to be internally validated? So I searched online. I love going on Google and asking all the difficult questions of life. And external validation just means that you're getting your feelings of self-worth based on sources outside yourself. So you are relying on something outside yourself to tell you that you are worthy, that you are accepted, and that you deserve happiness in a way. And internal validation is you're getting your sense of self-worth based on what your own opinions about yourself are. Now, in reality, we have a good mixture of both. We are externally validated by things like approval from our authority figures like teachers or our bosses or maybe popularity. So if we get approval from our friends and family, other ways that I think I relied on was earning degrees certificates all the awards and you know the concrete numbers like the marks you get that could externally validate your worthiness and at the same time while these are great they are over relying on them is just not good because these can be taken away these can be inconsistent so in terms of like approval from your friends and family it might not always be there you might not have a great support of friends uh and then what do you do does your entire sense of self-worth just comes crashing down so i think it's good to have a healthy mixture of both internal and external then i thought okay i get what external is that's very straightforward external is outside yourself but what about internal like what is that even supposed to mean am i supposed to tell myself that I'm good and worthy and what if I don't believe it and there is this thing that I learned in university when let's say your mind okay in your mind you believe something as a fact and when someone else tells you something that doesn't align with your internal thinking you actually experience distress So an example of that could be, let's say in your mind, you think that you are not worthy and that you suck, but then your partner tells you that you're amazing and you are, you're just, you know, a ray of sunshine, but you don't believe that internally. Instead of feeling good about that compliment, you're actually going to experience distress because what you hold internally does not align with what the other person is telling you. So in a way, you can kind of extrapolate and think that if I'm telling, if I keep doing these self affirmations and be like, I'm worthy, I'm worthy, I'm worthy, but inside you're not really believing that, then I don't think that would be effective in having a good sense of self worth. So then I was like, okay, so what what does it mean to be internally validated? And I researched again and you can get internal validation from having a core set of values or basing your worth on a character trait that is very important to you. Or if every day you do things that align with what is important to you because that way you are maintaining integrity and you're telling yourself that you're worth following up your beliefs your values with action and that's why a lot of times when we do something that is not aligning with our belief system we feel like crap and we feel shame so then i thought okay fine i need to have a core set of values and basically have different ways of doing actions that align with those values and so i came up with the list you can go on google and search it up but 
certain i can give you examples so there is let's say one of your core value is authenticity being true to who you are and surrounding yourself with people that also are true to themselves or being yourself at all times and not being ashamed of who you represent and i think that's a really big part of me another is maybe you are you really believe in equality and you believe in or you strive for fighting for human justice another is you really value joy and play or in other words having a work-life balance you really cherish your recreation time so there is a list online you can search it up and you can kind of talk about or not talk about think about what resonates with you in other ways you can do that is think about who do you admire and what do they represent that makes you so impressed with them so for me i one of my mentors i'm not going to mention who for their privacy I really, really admire them and I look up to them because they're super passionate, they're hardworking. And one thing that really impresses me or just like I look up to is despite their circumstances, despite where they came from, they they never gave up and ro- they rose above their circumstances and they became very successful. And they're very passionate about a research topic to the point that now they're conducting world class research and i was like that is absolutely amazing because you can clearly see that they're passionate about what they do and that is something that is very important to me so i guess one of my core values is passion doing things that i'm truly truly interested in invested in and i can't do anything otherwise and other things that you can think about in terms of what your core values are, uh, what inspires you to take action. Can you think about a time where you stood up for somebody or you did something that was very uncharacteristic of you and what was about that situation that made you do that? Uh, so those are your core values. And you. so then you can think about, okay, what are ways that I can display these core values in my daily life and one thing about me is that I started relying too much on one area of my life too much to the point that if I didn't have that then I just I felt lost I felt like I had no purpose or that my whole self-worth was attached to this one thing but then I thought wait a second life is so much more than that life is so much greater than that there's so many different areas and so you need to think about in your life what are different areas that you can display your core values whether that is personal relationships whether that is what you do as your hobbies and your side projects your actual main job your faith uh if you believe in a god or if you have a if you follow a particular religion how are you showing up in terms of your spirituality or your faith and uh, yeah so think about all those things and because i'm thinking about them right now it's not like i'm preaching to you or i'm teaching you it's literally something that i'm going through right now and yeah i don't have all the answers but i think that this is something that i'm working on and that's why i wanted to talk about it in this episode And also, one last thing that you can use to really think about your core values is when do you feel like yourself? In what situations do you feel like you're in your most element? Is it when you're surrounded by a certain group of people? Is it when you're doing a certain activity? Uh, For me, I really do feel like myself when I'm teaching. When I'm, yeah. What and it doesn't have to be anything, it could be teaching about a random thing. Like, I, I don't know, I just I love it when I'm trying, like, teaching or educating others, or when I'm helping someone be the best person they could be. 
And yeah, so that's basically my tidbit about validation and having a full cup of validation from different sources. It's like you're making a cocktail. You are adding different types of different sources of juices from different things and not to rely on one thing too much because what if it runs out what if it's not there that day then your whole sense of self-worth comes crashing down and you don't want that so you want to diversify your the sources of your validation whether it's your personal relationships career free time leisure faith um and i think there's like seven areas of life i'm not exactly sure what they are but physical health mental health etc so yeah that that was a pretty serious topic i didn't mean to get all (laughs) too serious in my first episode but yeah so nowadays actually before we end off i would just like to talk about things that i'm reading watching and any recommendations and i don't know about you but in my network i'm known as the netflix recommendation app because i watch well i used to watch a lot of movies shows and my main job is telling my friends and family what to watch and my recommendations if i say so myself are on point and because i do all like i don't know about you but when i watch a movie or a show i make sure i check the imdb rating i check the synopsis and i spend a lot of time researching before i watch something because i don't want to waste two hours on a crappy movie and some might think that's excessive but um a lot of times um you know i end up watching really amazing movies or shows but i wanted to talk about this book that i'm reading i started reading recently i used to read a lot back in high school and now i was like you know what let me just get back on it so i'm reading this book it's called what alice forgot by leanne moriarty and she's the author of the same uh, another book it's called big little lies which is a show on hbo that show was amazing and i i'm very i don't give out 10 out of 10s that easily and that show quite literally was 10 out of 10 it was it had drama it had mystery it had everything and the ending was shocking i'm not gonna give anything away but definitely recommend that show but this is another book by the same author so i'll tell you the synopsis i'm just i'm not even done i'm i'm like one third done no spoilers actually let me check if uh i'm just checking the book and okay so there's no spoilers in what i'm about to tell you so just imagine there's this girl her name is alice she's 29 years old and she has this perfect life she has this amazing husband his name is nick and they recently got married and they're fully in love and they're about to have their first child and but what happens in the beginning is she apparently falls and when she wakes up she finds out that she's not 29 years old anymore she's 39 so apparently she gets this injury at this spin cycle class and which causes her to lose 10 years of memories and now she's super confused because she thought she was pregnant she's not anymore and she's like what am i doing what's going on but things just keeps getting shocking so she learns that not only does she forget 10 years of her life but she's also getting divorced and she also is apparently fighting with her sister who she was really close to so now it's her task to figure out what happened in these 10 years like how can she go from being madly in love with her husband and he's madly in love with her they're expecting their first child to now 10 years later apparently the husband hates her and the sister like she was really close to is also very distant from her and she's just thinking like what in the world what happened 
So it's a very good book so far. I don't know if I recommend it. I'm going to finish it and I'll let you know. But imagine, God forbid, something like that happening that is so scary. But something that came up in my mind that I talked with my friend was, would you want to have a sneak peek into your future? So let's say if someone comes to you and says, hey, what if I can show you a trailer of how your life will look like in 10 years? Would you watch that trailer? And I'm kind of conflicted on that in a way because I think hope, like, ho- like hope is what keeps us going. And, you know, what if that trailer, God forbid, has something bad in it? And what if that makes me sad in the present moment? But at the same time, so many things in my life are uncertain right now. It would be nice to kind of have those kind of mysteries unsolved. So what do you think? Would you want to see a trailer of your life 10 years from now? But I guess, you know, this is the end of our episode. I hope you enjoyed these musings. I know I'm all over the place, but I hope you enjoyed your tea and this talk. And I will see you in my next episode. Bye.